Are you recording? Is it going on? Yes. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. So, um, our plan of attack today is look at the structure and function of neurons. So, those are the actual functional units. So, the bits of the nervous system that actually do a job. Because remember, with the human body, um, as in all of the organs, it's not the organ that actually does the job, it's each individual cell. If each individual cell um, stops functioning, then the whole organ stops functioning. And it's the same with the, um, with the brain. Of course, although the brain is still actually making neurons up to about 25 years of age. And that's what I talk about, try to limit your alcohol, especially um, binge drinking um, up, until, up until at least um, at least 20, simply because it, be, um, it becomes a problem for your brain. Good day. I wouldn't get too close, you could be like on the television, mate. So, because I'm filming the crack, mate. No, wait. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Miss Watson, you need to see reception. Okay. Uh-oh. Okay. <laughs> okay, so, um, we will... I'm excited. Oh, so, we will review activity one to three, and hey, because I'm going through it for these guys who are away um, as well, I'll, um, I'll give you the answers. Um, I, I usually don't like to, but I will do it on this occasion. We'll then have a look at how we classify neurons, because we classify them by two ways. Structural, the way they're built, and functional, what job they do. Okay, they're still, in effect, the same thing. Um, but we will do that. Then we'll have a look at a short video called Anatomy of a Neuron and then you'll finish off with Activity 4 and 5, okay? This is key basic stuff. Your understanding of how a neuron works um, and how it functions is, excuse me, is crucial to your understanding of the, in the entire system. So, let's go through Activity number 1, reg uh, Nervous Regulatory Systems. So, question number 1 asks us, Identify the three basic components of a nervous system and describe its role in homeostasis. Well, one of the first ones is um, there are receptors. Now, receptors are there to detect any change in the internal or external environment. That's crucial to what they need to do. Because without being able to detect, you can't make a change. So, um, super important there. You've got the central nervous system and its job is to basically process information, so process the information coming in, work out what's going on, and then what response are we going to have, and then what organ or system or gland has to deal with that. So that's the job of the central nervous system. If you like, that's almost like the, um, like the central processing unit on a computer. And then, of course, the last part is the effectors. And the effectors will bring about a response. Okay, so they're um, organs or glands that will produce, um, will, will bring about or cause the response. The parts that make up the nervous system, we could argue, uh, are your brain, your spinal cord, receptors, effectors, and neurons. Okay, or neurons. They're the parts that actually make up the nervous system because the other things are actually actions in there. Okay, let's flip over to our activity number two, which is the nervous system. Briefly describe the three main functions of the system. Well, you need, it's a sensory section, so you need to receive information. As soon as you stop receiving information, you stop the ability to be able to um, act and form a response. Um, the modulator system, or the modulator section, or function, uh, and that's the interpretation of, of messages and of course the motor section um, essentially initiates and then control of responses so it's the motor section as you send the message out will actually then cause the response to happen. Question number two asks describe the structure and role of each of the components of the central nervous system well, your brain and spinal cord, they have ultimate control. They're the processes of the information. Your spinal cord, as well, does the concept of a reflex arc. Okay, so, yeah. And a reflex arc, essentially, you, you touch, you do, uh, something um, can possibly hurt you. You get that information in, it goes straight to the nervous system, um, or straight into the spinal 
cord, the spinal cord then sends a response out straight away. Then the information goes to your brain, okay? Because that's a safety component. So I touch something hot, straight away my spinal cord sets up um, a response to put my hand away. And then, because you always go, oh, it's hot, actually up here. You never go, oh, it's hot. Oh, I better take my hand off. It's, oh, wow, that was hot. So it's always slightly after the event. Now, you're talking milliseconds after the event, but it's still after the event, okay? Now, the peripheral nervous system is all about receiving information and, and sending out responses, okay? So um, it's everything outside the, the central nervous system, but its major job is to take information in and then um, get information out to the various effectors to make a response. So that's the role of it there. So we go across to activity number three, divisions of the nervous system. Question one, differentiate between efferent and afferent. Efferent are nerves that go into the central nervous system and efferent goes out of the central nervous system. Wait, afferent goes out? Uh, yeah, afferent. No, aff, um, afferent goes in, efferent goes out. Okay. And I always remember that because I always A is first and A is always in. So, cheekily enough, of course, they put efferent first up there. So if you just, you know, so just be a, a little bit careful with that. And finally, the nervous system diagram there, well, your first one is, number one is the central nervous system, which is made up of the brain plus number two, which is the spinal cord. Our peripheral nervous system has two sections. So number three is the somatic system. Yeah. Number four is the autonomic system. Number five and six can be either the, well, the cranial or spinal nerves. Which one you put where is not, or, you know, not that important. Um, and number seven and eight uh, are the sympathetic and the parasympathetic system. Okay, so that's a nice little outline of the way that the system operates and the way that the system works, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so let's get in and have a look at neuron structure. Um, any questions or concerns over that part to begin with? Okay, so alrighty, let's uh, let's get headed. And again, this one's already up on Connect, so um, it's it's already there. Alrighty, so. What do we mean by nerves and what do they do? Well, we always call them a functional unit because any functional unit is the part that does the actual job. Okay, so um, when you talk about what the nervous system does and what does, other than command and control, how does it get its messages about? What physics? Electricity. Yeah, it's electricity essentially. Okay. So essentially it's about passing electrical impulses from one cell to another cell. So receiving them from a, um, a cell, which is a receptor, then <coughs> passing them on to another cell. So it's, it, it's this flow of um, electricity. So that's why it's a communication system. Mm. Now, we, can, we either classify them according to their function, so what they do. And we have three major types there. We have sensory neurons, which bring information into the central nervous system. We have motor neurons that transfer information away from the central nervous system to make a response in order to do something. And we have little connector or interneurons that will often be um, a pathway that an electrical impulse will go through. So for example, if you stub your toe, the message comes up, a sensory neuron goes into your spinal column it goes across your spinal column with a connector neuron and then a motor neuron removes your foot or goes oh gee that sort okay so the connector neurons um have that particular type of role um is it true like uh like a certain amount of pain your nervous system like shuts down um if you have too much pain yeah um in some cases it can Obviously, pain is one of those things that it's um, 
it is a, it's a sign that there's something wrong. And unfortunately, we as humans, and even more us as men, don't deal with that at all very well. Because we, th we still think it's manly to continue on and to you know continue to do things um, uh, in pain and I still continue to do stuff. But there are some people that can't feel pain, for example. You know, there's a nervous problem that they can't actually take in pain, which creates a problem. But some people, there's a threshold thing and that threshold is different in, in every person. Some people have a high threshold of pain, others have a low threshold. In fact, if I just put a comb near my daughter's hair, she screams that I'm ripping her hair out. Maybe you just can't do it. That would probably be part B, mate. Which um, is aggressive. Well, usually it's, you haven't brushed your hair, hurry up, come on, we've got to get in the car. Oh, yeah, no. Once I was, not lazy, but I just cut it because it was easier. You did mm. I'm a boy, mate. As a boy and a okay. husband and a father, you can get away with that. She was horrified. Scott, she doesn't let you touch her hair. No, but she cuts her hair now. So the, yeah, the last time I saw it, you know, things were like that. <laughs> <laughs> She's funny. She makes me laugh. So, Alrighty, let's have a look at, at, at the basic structure, ladies and gentlemen. Now, again, this is a typical neuron. Um, however, they're all slightly different. But they all tend to have these basic parts. Now, essentially, they all have a cell body, and it's just like a regular cell body that has regular cell organelles, because it's got to do everything that a, um, a regular cell does. It's got its nucleus in the middle, it's got all of its mitochondria, and all that sort of stuff. What's different, which is coming off the cell body, are these things called dendrites. And the dendrites are responsible for transferring information across nerves. Okay. Like they yes. Yes. They don't physically connect because they actually don't touch. It's the information. Yes. What happens is we send an electrical impulse down. Um, it causes um, a neurotransmitter, which is a chemical, to be released from the end up here, and then oh, so it goes dentures to my end. Yep. No and then goes to the dendrite. So as an impulse gets done, it gets received from here, oh. gets pushed along, pushed along, pushed along. At that point there, because it's an electrical impulse, it, um, it causes um, a neurotransmitter to be released, which is a chemical that goes across the little gap, because there's a little gap between this dendrite and the motor end plate or the, um, or the dendrite of the, of the next cell. And it's the actual, it's the um, it's the chemical that will then go across and then restart the electrical like impulse. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. But interestingly enough, this is how we kill flies. We've worked at you know, with fly spray when you kill them and they go around in circles, they buzz, 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 buzz. What we do is normally there's an enzyme of here that breaks down the neurotransmitter, so it doesn't transmit all the time. With flies, we block that. So essentially what we do is we excite them to death. Because as their system is stimulated, lots of neurotransmitters released, none of it's broken down, so they get all excited, and, boosh, and then they're done. <laughs> so we, we excite them to death. What a way to go. I could think of better ways though. Not sure that I really want to spin on my back. So. All right, so we have these dendrites, which will connect up to um, another neuron which is placed in and around it. Now, then we have this extension that runs all the way down the neuron, and that's what we call the axon. Now, that's crucially important, because if that axon breaks, yep. then in some cases your electrical impulse won't travel. But essentially, um, your electrical impulse gets received, gets transported through, and we learn how to do that um, and, and about that, which is a hard sort of area of the course. And it, it simply travels along here and then it gets to the end over here. Okay. Now, you'll notice that there's these things, these little uh, sort of sausage cells that um, are wrapped around it. And those um, are called myelin sheaths. Now, myelin sheaths um, are a fatty material and they do two major jobs. They act as an insulator 
because don't forget you've got electricity flowing here. The other thing they do is that they speed up how fast a reaction can occur. Now if you have an unmyelinated neuron, which means you only have this axon part, the entire impulse has to travel through all of the axon. If you have a myelin sheath around it, what that enables the axon to do is actually just for the electrical impulse to jump from one end of the cell to the other end of the cell. And that speeds up how fast the reaction occurs. Not by a uh, Not by um, a catalyst, no. But we'll, um, we'll explain how with that. Okay, so. It will just go bang, 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 and we'll get there much quicker. These Schwann cells here um, are responsible essentially for that particular type of cell. Okay, so um, all of the Schwann cells will be wrapped around it, and they'll have the job of of being able to coordinate that um, <coughs> that particular um, cell. On the outside of it, you have this thing called a neurolemma, which is just like an outer layer or an outer membrane that covers and and protects that okay so um, you have that particular structure now right in here we have nodes of Ranvia okay so these little gaps between where the swan cells are okay they're called the node of Ranvia and as I said that enables the electrical impulse to be done because essentially what causes your neurons to work is simply two things potassium ions and sodium ions that's all that it is you flood sodium ions into um, into the axon um, and it sets up an electrical charge and it moves along and then when you're finished you chuck out all, all of the sodium you chuck out all of the potassium and it resets itself so um, it's the only thing which really causes it to be able to work. So, and then we get to this motor end plate. Now, of course, with, with the motor end plate, this is a motor neuron. Okay, so this is a neuron that would go from your, your central nervous system um, out to an organ or a gland. So, for example, these motor end plates would be attached to your muscles in order for them to be able to work. Okay. So that's the typical one that you'll see when you're going to label them. That's usually the one that you have to label. Can the sheath degrade? Yes, it can. Yeah. And that will then cause, and actually what that causes is that then causes the impulse to slow down, which creates problems. Yeah. Yeah. And there is a couple of, of conditions that um, yeah, are, are with that. Alrighty, so let's have a look at how we classify neurons structurally. Well, there's only three structures they have, okay? Number one, uh, it's going to be a dendrite. Will be one. Um, they'll have an axon, um, and they will have a cell body, okay? So those are the three structures. And essentially, it's where are each of those structures? Now, of course, in science, because we're really boring, um, we like to go with the approach of bi, uni, and multi. Okay. So let's look at a, um, at a unipolar first. Okay. So um, here we go. Now, they have one axon. They have so here's our one axon, okay, um, down here. Let's see. That's, that's not an axon. Um, we have one axon. Uh, we have the cell body is located on the side, okay, whereas you can see this one, the cell body is located within. So um, actually, that is your axon. And what you then have also is um, you do have multiple sort of dendrites um, across the top. But essentially for a, a unipolar, uni being one, one axon, 
cell body stuck on the side. Now, bipolar. What are we going to have two of? But now remember, axons. most people are going to say axons. Okay? But we only ever have one axon. The connections to Okay, so excellent. What we have is one axon, one cell body, and one dendrite coming in. Okay, so that's a dendrite coming in. So that's what we have with a bipolar, and most of the connected neurons. Um, are bipolar neurons. And our last sort of course is multi. Okay, so again, we've got one axon down here, we've got one cell body, but what's different? Beautiful, multiple dendrites. Okay, multiple groups of dendrites. So that's the way that we distinguish between the two different types. Okay, so quick recap: bipolar, one axon, one del, one dendrite cell body, generally within the middle. Unipolar, one axon, one cell body off to the side, and you've got some dendrites on either end. And then, of course, multipolar. We've got one axon, one cell body and multiple dendrites. And that's the way that we classify them structurally, ladies and gentlemen. Questions there? Um, um, bipolar has multi uh, multiple dendrites, is there? Um, it can do, yeah. But you know, we mainly focus, and if you have a look at you know, sort of where the cell bodies are for each, I'd, I always tend to remember by where the cell bodies are. Okay, in the middle, I mean off to the side is uni, in the middle is bi because there's going to be two. Okay, yeah. Yeah, there's What's only the one and then multi. Oh, in terms of the way that I remember which one's each. Okay, you're bipolar, you've got, um, you've got a structure either side of, you know, one structure either side of the cell body. Um, a uni, you've got your one structure off to the side. So it just runs itself through. And multi, you've got these multiple dendrites um, attached. Because one cell, one neuron doesn't connect to one other neuron. One neuron might connect to 30 different neurons. Because the message has got to go through to the right place. And this is what they get concerned about with people who binge drink when you're your age. Because your brain's forming, your brain forms by just growing dendrites to a position. So you may have a dendrite growing and it's in this position now. Six weeks later, or six months later, six years later, you could have the one that joins up to it. So if you kill this one, because you go binge drinking or drug taking or you know have an accident, trauma, in you know, whatever it is, then this one grows up and it's got nothing to connect to. And that creates a bit of a problem. So because your brain doesn't stop growing until you're 25 that creates a problem so so drink response drink responsibly would be the key oh no don't be silly because then the government wouldn't make hardly any money mate because there's young people that drink so there's well the drinking in the legal drinking age was actually 21 for a long for uh, forever in australia and um it, it only got changed at the time of the Vietnam War when they said, well, if, if at 18 you can go and die for your country, you should be able to have a drink. And I'll tell you this funny story on this. It's just a funny story. Um, a mate of mine played for the Atlanta Braves baseball organisation and they brought a young kid over from the Dominican Republic. Now, in the Dominican Republic, you don't tend to have a birth certificate. Um, a, because, you know, you know uh, the health is not um, as our system, but these people would often lose their birth certificate. So what he did was, and his uh, name by the player of Raphael Fercal, he told the Atlanta org uh, the organisation uh, that he was 18. Okay, um, so he went driving one day um, after one of the games down in some you know, two-bit town in the middle of the states, and, and got picked up for DD. 
Now, of course, in the States, you've got to be 21 to be able to drink. So that cop said, well, you've, you know, you're in on, um, on a sporting visa, you've broken the law, you'll get kicked out. All of a sudden, he found his birth, uh, his birth certificate and he was 23. So he told the, uh, the, the organisation that he was younger so he could play for longer. Yeah, because they'll sign an 18 year old kid, they won't sign a 23 year old kid. <laughs> it's really interesting. So as soon as as he was um, facing the deportation, oh, he found his uh, birth certificate. And there's been heaps of cases like that in American baseball, you know, one time. Yeah. Do you still play for it? Uh, no, I retired, I think about five or six years ago. I had a pretty long career. Um, he would have paid over 10 years. Oh. And if you pay over 10 years in baseball in America, your pension is $250,000 per year for the rest of your life. Oh, sure. <laughs> and if you play longer, <laughs> if, you, <laughs> if you play longer, um, you get more money. So, yeah, so you can see, um, you can see the sort of money like attached to it. So. Alrighty, now let's have a look at each of the different types of neurons, ladies and gentlemen. So, this is a sensory neuron. Um, a sensory neuron. How do we know? Well, the most important thing is the cell body is on the side. Okay, that's the way that we tell a sensory neuron. So, this is in fact um, a unipolar um, neuron. So, what we've got is at one end. Oh, Um, at one end, we've got these receptors, okay? So these are the receptors that pick up the information. Because they're a sensory neuron, they bring information into the central nervous system from outside of it, okay? So we've got some receptors in the skin here, um, and that is the starting point. Then you obviously go down and you get into here again. Here is our axon, okay? Now, you'll notice with diagrams, they'll have a little break in them. What that means is we don't know how long it is. We can get some that are really short, we can get some that are really long. Okay, biggest one goes from about your your big toe up to your back. Okay. Mm. Oh, does a cell body do? Uh, it does everything a normal cell body does. And does the pulse pass through the cell body or does it just get nope. no, through the axon. Okay. So like when you you know when you hurt yourself and like you can feel it like when you bleed? And you feel like you can feel your like pulse in it. Would that be because of them? Or no, that's like blood. Ah. Oh. Yeah, that's not these. That's weird. Yeah, those guys. So, um, again, we've got um, our myelin sheath covering our axon. So this one's a better one where you can see the axon run right the way through. It then gets out, um, and you get to your dendrites here. Okay, so this will connect up into your central nervous system. Okay, but how can we tell? There's two ways that we can always tell with a sensory neuron. The cell body is located on the outside, and you have receptors. In the skin. Well, that can be anywhere, mate, and that can be any type of receptor. We have heat, um, blood concentration, uh, blood pH, oxygen concentration. There's a whole lot of different ones. Okay. Um, yeah, but this one shows it basically within the skin. Again, we always go and nerve impulses can only go one direction. Only go from here to there. Okay, they don't travel backwards. And when we learn about how um, how they travel, we um, we cover that one. Now, so, 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 so that function is um, receives oh, a receptor and then goes to the Yep, receive information and send it to the central nervous system. Absolutely. Now, connected neurons or interneurons are slightly different. They don't have myelin sheaths. <coughs> so the question is, why wouldn't they have a myelin sheath? Because the other two generally do. Why not these guys? Because there's no body, real long body. Well, what does that tell you about the whole size of it? They're small. Yeah, they're small. Okay, they're small neurons, so they, um, it's not going to be that great a speed up. The greatest amount of time it takes 
um, for a nervous impulse is actually transferring from one nerve to another nerve. That takes up the most amount of time because it, it, it's got to send a chemical across the little gap between the two nerves and that takes all the time. Nervous impulses travel really, really quickly. So what do they have? Again, they've got a cell body. They've got their dendrites occurring here, a uh, really small axon, and then the synaptic ending. So you find a lot of these within the brain, and you find a lot of them um, in your spinal cord. Now, when we cut open our brains, you'll see two different colors. You'll see white areas and gray areas. White areas are the cells that have myelin sheaths. Grey areas are cells that don't have myelin sheets. So, yeah, which is these guys. So we call them grey matter versus white matter. Um, is that multipolar? No, usually bipolar. Uh, because every diagram you get is going to look slightly different. Yeah, that's you know, that's the, the part. So these are to simply transfer information. So you'll get some information in here. It will go through there, and it will send it off to where it ever it needs to send it off to. Okay. Now again, impulse direction from the dendrites along along the axon to in this case it's called synaptic endings. Where two neurons, um, well they don't meet, but where they sort of effectively join, we call it um, a synapse, which is just a little gap between the two nerves. Okay, so it's a synaptic ending. Now our last one is our motor neurons, and that's the classic one that most people see in diagrams and the like, and that's the one that I use to show the, um, you know, the generalized structure. Here's our dendrites, here's our cell body, once again, our axon, again, the fact that it's broken to show that it could be variable lengths. Um, we've got our Schwann cell nucleus, so our Schwann cells there. Um, we've got our myelin sheets. We've got our nodes of Ranvia in there. And of course, now it goes down and those motor end plates attach to something. And in this case, they're attaching to muscle fibers. So what would happen is a impulse would come down here, go along there, and it will tell those muscles to contract. So they tell what everything what to do. And Essentially, they, yeah, they tell them what to do. Yeah, uh, well, the sensory information get uh, well, the sensory gets all the information in. The connector neurons um, and the brain say this is what we're going to do. Which one's connected? That's the one that we had before. So, yeah. Yes, so that's the connector neuron, and then it will pass the message out, and these guys will take care of the message. Is that response? That's response, yes. So, now, of course, it doesn't have to connect to muscles, it can connect to glands. Okay, if you want to sweat, and, um, um, uh, yeah, sweat or spit, it's got to send a message to those glands to do that. So. Um, it will send the message off. But you can see there, it's the same basic structure for all of them. Again, you'll notice impulse direction from the dendrites through the axon. Okay, that can't go back. Wait, is um, polar from the thing to the dendrites? Oh. The dendrites always receive the message at, um, first, oh. and then the axon passes it on. So that's the three basic ways. Now, it does get a little bit confusing. We never, in the past, you know, we never used to have to talk about multipolar and stuff because it was a little bit confusing, you know, because you've got multipolar and you've got um, your motor neurons that are, are the same things, okay? But it's just in the way that we classify them, uh, they become slightly different, okay? So um, that's the differences between the two. Now, let me see if I've covered all the information. Protects and insulates. Yep, so the myelin sheath protects and insulates. The neurolemma, yeah, which surrounds these swan cells, that's there um, and helps to repair. Um, so you can repair um, the myelin sheath. You can't repair the axon, though. Once the axon's broken, 
then that nerve is essentially finished. Um, so this is the area um, where we basically are trying to do a bit of research, um, a little bit of research in. Um, they carry messages away, I've covered that. So I think we're good ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so any questions or concerns there? Okay, what I'll do is I'm gonna show a six minute Khan Academy video, um, which looks at the anatomy for those people who aren't with us, can you now please um, click off this and click on the anatomy of a motor neuron, please. Now, let me get rid of this. Let me turn this off now.